My name is Dino Lusa, and I don't really know what got me into portrait photography. I've always been interested in photography in general, just looking at some of the master's works. Karsh was one of my, one of my favorites. He did some uh, like Kennedy, Ali, um, Churchill, some of those old, old photographs. And you know, as I, as I, the more I got into it, I started studying these guys, and you know, uh, it was just amazing to me. And you know. I'm not a real extroverted person, so uh, portraiture would doesn't seem like it would be something that I like. But it's it's really interests me to try to get try to uh, understand somebody in an hour or two hour photo session and and just try to um, get something out of their personality. So let's let's start right around the corner over here. Let me preface this by saying my my wife used to own a, a coffee shop in Stafford Springs and. We had a lot of people in and out of the coffee shop, and um, while I was starting my journey, um, I was always looking for people to photograph. This was one of my first favorite photos I took. Um, this is of Abby. She's a singer-songwriter out of Stafford Springs, Connecticut. This was just one of those magic moments that I just, this photo right here of, um, I don't know, I, it, I feel like it just got everything about her personality. The colors were right, the light was right. That was one of the ones that just gave me a little bit of encouragement to keep moving on. And that was one of my first cameras. It's nothing special. It goes to show you it's not about the camera, it's not about your gear. It's literally capturing the moment, getting some light and, and, and you know, m waiting for that magic to happen actually and, and being in the right place at the right time. You know, a lot of times um, what what my vision of them would be and what their vision of them is usually two separate things. A lot of people, you know, only have this certain view of themselves, whether they're looking in the mirror in a, in a, in a badly lit room and then they get a nice professional photo taken of them and they're, they're, a lot of times they can't believe it's them. And then, you know, a lot of times it's, it's um, I feel it's my picking of the photo as opposed to them picking a photo of themselves where they feel it's like safe and that's how they look and if I choose it sometimes it's it's really it's really a great feeling when they when they really enjoy it. So when did you start? I I mean I've been taking yeah, like everybody's always taking photos mm -hmm. but I in, in earnestly I like 2019 I had a decent camera that wasn't just a point and shoot it was a, a real DSLR I had that with a fairly decent lens and that's that's when I first started and I got the idea that I could actually do that. I was always kind of afraid to step out of my lane and, and get into this type of thing. Well some of these cameras can be very um, intimidating. That's a mastery in itself. It is, it is and that, that was probably one of my things in the back of my mind was I don't want to learn all this stuff I just want to shoot but yeah you have to learn both and you have to learn everything but honestly at the end of the day it's it's the light and it's not the camera. There's, you know, some of the greatest photos of all time have been taken on, you know, in today's age would be not even considered decent cameras, you know, and these are, these are photos that we all know and, and love. The cameras right now, it just makes your job a little bit easier sometimes. Other than that, it's still, you know, where you're holding the camera, where the light is. These three photos right here, for example, are all natural light. There's no studio lights in, in any of these. It's, it's window light coming in, um, different times of the day. If we can take advantage of natural light, I always think it's better. I think people are more connected to it somehow as well. These are a couple photos of these, these two great individuals, Chris and Hannah. They were cooks at our coffee shop and they decided to come in. Emily was also a barista there um, and they, they decided to come up to the studio and we're, I was fortunate enough for them to come up and, and let me shoot them. Um, these were probably uh, 2021, 22. This was a more recent photo. I probably did uh, maybe uh, probably three months ago. But I really liked that one. I just it had like a almost like a paint, painterly quality to it. I, I was really proud of that one. And you know, a lot of the a lot of these photos, this one especially, I really try to you know focus on the eyes. So much can be conveyed in the eyes. You know, you you can tell, you know, what people are doing through their eyes. A lot of times, never mind, you know, their their facial expressions. But I like to start, you know, with the eye and and and, and then move out from there. If I'm if I'm there, then I, I know I'm in a good spot. This is Nicole. We struck up great conversations, and 
you know, I asked her if I could photograph her and we started and this was the first day she came, we, we did this, it was very raw, I feel it's just, you know, really just a, a, a great, um, you know, depiction of her. And then we worked together for probably two or three years and we ended up here all the way through and, you know, this was, this was probably this spring. So, I mean, I, not only did I evolve in my photo taking of her, but uh, she evolved in her posing and, and, and her way of expressing herself. It, it was just, it was really good. So you're saying the relationship is really important? Absolutely. You, you can even see in the eyes, like here, it, it's, it's more of a, you know, uh, you know I'm, I'm here. Uh, I'm not quite sure of it, and uh, as you as as they go on, you see the confidence come come alive and and in the eyes, and you know, we we try you know make it comfortable and you know laugh and talk about pets and and you know stuff like that. It always it's always good, but yeah, it's it gets to the point where from the beginning to to where we got, it was really a great journey. Some of the other ones we did, I was involved in a wedding shoot that was a bridal boutique. Brought some. Uh, bridesmaids gowns down to our studio. We had hair and makeup come in and and this was one of the photos from that. That was one of my first year, that was my first year as well. That was 2020. So these are the glam shots. These are the glam shots, yeah. But this is natural light as well. Not no no artificial light there. These these are both um, natural light as well. Um, we, just window light with a flag on the side. That's Ashley. She, I I wish I brought another photo of her. Um, she she worked for us at the cafe as well, um, and I had her from she's probably 19 here, and then we had her till like 21. And the the transformation in the two photos was just st stunning. I mean, it, it it was just amazing. This is my wife Karina who posed for me. This is another spot we have right adjacent to the studio, but I just loved how the, the shadow was working with me that day. And yeah, you got to take a lot of shots sometime to, to hit a home run, but sometimes you, you, you get lucky and the cumulative knowledge starts to seep in. I've lived in Stafford my whole life. I've been involved with a race team my whole life. So uh, natural evolution was to bring my camera down to the Stafford Speedway. And, you know, there's a lot of emotion there. There's a lot of great light, great, always drama, cool things happening there. So, you know, these are just some of the photos from here. This was a, a driver coming in after the race. He was, the, he was the track champion last year. You could see the fatigue here on his face after the race, you know, just, you know, how, how grueling it is sometimes. This was just, you know, leaving the facility one night, it, the fog rolled in and, you know, just the lights there. And then one night we had a you know great full moon there, and the the cars happened to be coming off of off of the turn. It was just I don't know, loved it. You know, did something over here caught my eye with you know just these it's just tires next to a thing, but I, the way the light happened to be hitting, you know, here was a, another after a race and you finish well, you go to tech and you have to tear your car apart and do some things and this. This young man was waiting for his crew to come over and he was just waiting there and the light was just nice. He had a nice light here. He had this nice rim light coming in the back of him there. It, it was just, you know, and he, he's just waiting there. It's, it's, I feel it tells a good story. Absolutely. And then, you know, another, another spot I like to shoot there just with the, the colors there. It's, we have this nice blue and, and orange there all the time and it, depending on the car colors, it, it's just, it's a real nice cinematic look there all the time. Uh, again, you know, all these are a natural light. The beauty of modern cameras allow you to take these photos um, with no flash. You can really, you know, open an aperture way, way up and the, the ISO for some photo geeks is, you know, you can, you can really crank it up high and they're, they're still pretty sharp. They're still pretty sharp photos when, you know, 15, 20 years ago, these would have been pretty grainy photos. Yeah, because I wasn't aware um, of your interest in um, motorsports or your photography. So Yeah, that's... I lived right across the street from the Speedway growing up. So it was just, you know, it, was, it had to happen. So, you know, if I had lived anywhere else, I probably would have never been involved with it. But it's just been a part of since I was a kid. So I'm like, ah, I'll, I'll, I'll start taking photos there raise the game there. So, yeah, we'll, we'll head, head around the corner again. These three were last year. Um, this was Chris, the cook that was over there in the photo with Emily. 
he, he was gracious to uh, sit in for me a bunch of times as well. These two over here um, were, were studio lights. I have a, I have a LED, big LED. It's just a constant light in the studio. I use that a lot. But I wanted to show this one. I did a couple that were like real, you know, high, like glamour look. And this is Caitlin. She's an artist that's doing a big mural in our photo studio right now. While she was painting, I said, well, you're going to have to sit in. And she did. Emily, again, she was around the corner with Chris, um, worked for us for years, posed. And then we, we had the, you know, the, the flight jacket on with, in, a, in a concrete chair with a, like a, a metallic background here. And it, it just gives you a whole different look, but. There's so much to composition. It's just not simple. It's not simple. And I, I, I think, you know, uh, you know, I had to trust myself on, you know, you, you have to be in the moment. You have to, you have to just trust yourself. If you're thinking about all these rules and stuff like that, the moment's gone sometimes. And, you know, you just, ha you have to trust yourself and you have to know what you're looking for, I think, is, is another big key. I have to have a vision and I have to know what that is. And once you, once you know what you're looking for, then it's much easier to, to get it, to, to find that. Um, so this was another part of our 70s um, photo shoot. Again, Dylan and Emily, um, these, these were friends of ours that, uh, that agreed to come down and spend the day with us. We had hair and makeup done this day. And again, got some vintage clothes from Three Graces. My wife, Karina, helped us style this, and we got curtains, and, you know, a lot of this stuff now is done post, you know, you can do AI. To me, that there's still something, you know, visceral about having it in the moment and doing what the, the masters had done. There's an atmosphere created just, I think, especially in this, this um, particular portrait here, you know, there's just a mood. That was Dylan, Dylan, the same same gentleman who was just down in that 70s look. Yeah, he got it. You know, I probably took 30 or 40 photos of him right in the same spot, and this one was just so much better than the rest of them. And it's 30 or 40 photos of him, and you know, this one jumped out. This was one of my earliest photos. Um, Kyle, a friend of a friend's, came and sat in natural light. That's right in front of a a, a window. Uh, Alexis, she worked first at the cafe, side window light. This was my aunt Patrice. Um, she came in and, and sat, and I thought that was just like a timeless photo there as well, the, the black and white. Her face is, is you know, conveying a, a story. Uh, I just, I, I just loved that one. That was one of my favorites of all time as well. And I noticed some of the uh, portraits are also in some of your books. Uh, my wife Karina and Chris, who was in a couple of those photos as well, they put together a couple photo books for me. One is um, a bunch of portraits of all different individuals, and then one is the woman Nicole that I'd worked with from the start. From it's it's our journey all the way through. And it, it tells quite a story, and it, you, I think you can, if you if you happen to come down to the library and take a look at these books, ask um, the librarian. They'll they'll come out and they'll take them out of the case for you, and you could thumb through them. I, I would be honored if you took a look at them and 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 you know, wrote some thoughts down or or, or just just looked at them. I, I would be really uh, excited about that. But uh, thank you so much for, for having me here. It's one thing to have photos on your computer and to, to have them on your phone, but when they get out in a large format, they really come alive, like you said before. Well, I think the library has been transformed with your photographs. Oh, thank you. Very pleasant backdrop for us, and I would urge people in the community to come out and come and see the photographs in person because there is nothing like the real deal and you can get up so close to them. None of this would be possible without Karina. She brings most of this to life for me. She, that, she, <laughs> she, she got with you and, 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 and made this all happen and, and you know, does a lot of the work behind the scenes that this wouldn't be happening without her. It's very exciting to work with somebody who's so talented as him and we are so honored to have had you come in and say that you loved his work, so that was wonderful for us. Well, I hope everybody in Southbridge gets the opportunity to come in and takes advantage of this opportunity and comes in to have a look at the work. Thank you so much, Karina Thank you. and Dino. Thank you, Margaret.